Hey everyone, it's John and today we're going to continue back on the Key Concepts video series where I take some IP routing key concepts and break them down to give you a broad overview to help supplement your textbooks. Okie doke, so in this video what we're going to be doing is analysing the differences between EBGP and IBGP. So with that said, let's kick on, let's do it. Okay, so let's go and discuss it then, shall we? So the first point to know is that BGP will invoke eBGP rules when pairing with a neighbour in a different autonomous system and this is predicated on when you type that neighbour command, if you specify the remote AS to be a different AS than what you have configured, then we're going to be using eBGP rules. On the contrary, IBGP rules will be invoked when pairing with a neighbour within your autonomous system. So same again, when you type in that neighbour command, if the remote AS actually matches the same AS that you're in, we're going to start using IBGP rules. Next, EBGP will very typically peer over physical interfaces. Now be aware, you actually can peer over loopbacks in EBGP, but what you'll need to do is typically set up static routes pointing towards the opposing AS or somehow make an agreement to run an IGP between the two of them so you can actually reach that loopback but be aware that EBGP has a default time to live value of 1 and if you're going to actually peer in the loopback that's going to take 2 hops therefore you actually need to make a modification using the EBGP multi hop command and I'm not really going to go into too much more depth than that I'm trying to keep this video short but if you want to read more about that or see more about that watch my video on BGP multi hop the crucial point I want to point you to is that EBGP will prepend the AS path with its own AS number. This is the stamping mechanism we talked about in the previous video on loop prevention. And next point, which is perhaps even more crucial, is that it will modify the next hop values as prefixes are advertised. IBGP, however, will typically peer over loopback interfaces and we'll get to why that is towards the end of the video. But what you really need to understand is that IBGP will not prepend the AS path number, okay? It will not do that stamping mechanism as it moves routes around within IBGP. And even more crucially, it will not modify the next hop value. This can present some serious issues with next hop reachability and you're going to have to do a little bit of juggling to get that to work. You'll need to use what's called the next hop self command or introduce some form of redistribution. Now whilst there are other differences such as EBGP has got an administrative distance of 20 and IBGP has got an administrative distance of 200, the most important distinction between EBGP and IBGP is their handling of that next hop information as well as how they prevent loops. Now we've already dealt with the loop prevention in the previous video. I think if we really drill down on the next hop reachability problem in this video, together we'll be in a real good spot. So that's what I want to focus on. So with that said, let's look at some configurations and examples. Okay, so we've got a fairly simple topology here. We've got five routers in five different autonomous systems and we're going to be using this topology to just really analyse how eBGP handles that next hop information when it advertises a prefix. So what's going to happen is we've got router one over here and that's going to advertise 99.99.99.1 into eBGP, okay? So it's going to go across to its peers. Now when it does that, when it sends that advertisement, it's going to tell router 2 here that to get to this loopback of 99.99.99, the next hop that it wants to use should be the IP address here, okay? This will be this one's next hop to get to this address, okay? Which makes perfect sense. But the key point is what happens next. How does it go down the chain, okay? So, next, this router passes that prefix on to router 3, okay, about the 99 network. The key point is, is that it doesn't leave the next hop as this interface. It actually modifies it, and when it tells router 3 about that prefix, it says, hey, router 3, if you want to get to that prefix, your next hop is the IP address of this interface. And the same thing repeats again. Router 3 pass it to router 4 and it says to router 4, if you want to get to the 99 network, the next hop you should take is my IP address on this interface. And again, router 4 does the same thing to router 5. It says if you want to get to the 99 network, what you want to do is have a next hop of my interface here and that will be your path to get to that network. And that is how eBGP handles the next hop. It modifies it upon advertisement, okay? So let's just look at that in the actual configurations then, shall we? Just go down here. 
So let's go and look at router 1 then, shall we? So if you notice, we've actually got this loopback address of, or rather we don't even have this loopback address, how about we configure that loopback address? <laughs> okay, so we'll do 9999.1 and give it a slash 32 mask. So we now we've got that loopback address and if we go into our BGP, so we'll do router BGP5 and let's advertise that, okay, so we'll do 9999.1 with a mask of slash 32. And if we do show IP BGP, we'll see that the next hop is all the zeros here. That's because the route is originating here. There's no next hop to go to. We are the actual final hop to get to that because it's our loopback. But what happens when we go down the chain? Well, first notice what the IP address is on gigabit 01 here. Oh, sorry, gigabit 00. The gigabit 00 address is 10.5.11.1. Okay. So let's go to router 2 and see how it sees that route. See that the next hop is 10.5.11.1, which actually matches the IP address on router 1's gig 00. So now, if we go down the chain yet again, let's go to router 3 and see what it sees. The next hop is now changed. It's now 10.11.28.1, which is the IP address of gigabit, or rather gigabit 01 of router 2. And we can check that here. And you can see that there. And same again, if we go down to router 4, this behavior just continues on. The next hop is changed yet again, and on router 5, the next hop is changed yet again to, in this case, router 4's gig 01, and we'll just finally check that. There we go. So this might not seem like much of a revelation, it probably seems quite logical, especially if you're dealing with IGPs and used to this kind of behaviour. The point is, is that in contradistinction, IBGP operates totally differently. So what I wanted to do was to highlight EBGP first, but now let's look at how IBGP would handle this type of thing, okay? So let's go and do that. Okay, now you'll probably recognise this topology from the previous video on loop prevention discussion, IBGP. Let's talk about the next hop now. So let's imagine that router 1 has got an IP address of a loopback of 99.99.99.1 and it's going to advertise it into BGP. Now before we actually do this with IBGP, let's re kind of iterate how it would deal with EBGP. So let's imagine these are actually different ASs. This is AS77 here, this is AS99 and this is AS, I don't know, 100, okay? So when this router here receives it, it's going to pass it along to router 3, but tell router 3 if you want to get to this network, your next hop will be this interface, okay? And then it will pass it along to this router down here and say if you want to get to this network, your next hop should be this interface here. That makes perfect sense. That's what we saw in the previous video with eBGP. Now let's discuss IBGP rules. How will this actually work out now? And what you really need to understand is that IBGP doesn't like to make modifications. It tries to preserve things in their original state. So what's going to happen is we've got this router sending this loop back of all the 99s, okay, via eBGP because it's sending from one AS to a different AS, which is all fine. Now, it's going to tell this router here that to get to the 99 network, its next hop should be here, okay? All makes perfect sense, but what happens next now that we're inside IBGP? When we send to this peer here, and this peer here, and as well this one, because actually peering with this as well, we're actually going to say the next hop is not this or this. We're just going to leave the next hop as it was when we received it. So when we get this prefix and we tell router 3, for example, the next hop, we're going to say to get to 99, 99, 99.1, your next hop is this. Okay. And same again, when the prefix comes in here and it tells this neighbor here, it's going to say to get to the 99 network, your next hop is here. Okay, so what are the actual implications of when this happens? So let's look at the configuration and see what this actually means in real terms, okay? Let's just close this down. So let's go to router 1 and we'll see we've got that loop back. And let's advertise it into BGP. So if we do router BGP 50, 
network 99.99.1 and give it the mask of a slash 32 and if we do show IP BGP we're now injecting it and if we go to this one here okay so the next hop is 192.168.1.1 let's see what happens when we go to here okay still the same next hop it's still the next hop of 192.168.1.1 so what is the problem here you'll actually notice that see down here we're missing a little symbol these routers within the AS don't actually understand how to get to that network now router 2 does because it's actually connected to that network but the ones here don't so what we need to do is to do a little bit of manipulation to allow this routing to occur and the two things or the two ways the two methods to solve this is to use the next hop self command and redistribution one or the other so let's talk about next hop self first so let's go into router 2 and change its neighbor relationship with router 3 with this next hop self okay and we'll examine what's actually going to happen so if we do a router bgp 77 and we say for neighbor 3.3.3.3 next hop self what we're effectively doing here is and if i just do a clear ip bgp soft what we're doing is saying that when we send an update to neighbor 3.3.3.3 break that rule actually change the next hop to itself so change the next hop to 2.2.2.2 which in turn router 3 actually knows how to get to so if we now go up to router 3 and we do our show ip bgp the next hop is 2.2.2.2 and we've now got that little arrow because the reason why is because we can actually reach 2.2.2 via ospf so this is how we're actually seeing how this kind of synergistic relationship between interior gateway protocols and IBGP work together. So if we wanted to repeat that behavior, we could do it with, say, uh, neighbor four, and do router BGP 77, and we can do neighbor next hop self, and just do our clear IP BGP soft, and now, if we go to router 4, do a show IP BGP, we've modified the next hop to be all the twos. It is now a valid path. And if we do show IP BGP, it now shows in our routing table. Whereas, as it stands, router 5 doesn't have that command configured on it. So it still is left in limbo. It still doesn't have a valid path and it doesn't have that root in its root table. So that's one way to solve it is to do the next hop self command. And you don't need to do that between every single router. Just do it at the boundary of the network. Just give it, just so that the routers within the AS have an IP address which they can access and they can access 2.2.2.2 because of the underlying IGP. So what's the other way we can deal with this problem? So rather than actually invoking the next hop self command, what we could also do would just be to make this network here, make that available to OSPF and we can do that via redistribution. So let's go into router 2 and if we do yep, configure terminal and we just create a root map and call it connected and give it permit 10 as a sequence number. And what we'll do is we'll actually match on interface gigabit 00, zero. and then if we go into router ospf1 and we do redistribute connected and just redistribute the connected interfaces specified in the root map called connected so that'll be that one interface now that actual network here will be appearing in ospf as an e to root so if we now go here and we do a show ip bgp this is now a valid path even though that the next hop is not changed because the next hop is now reachable because of redistribution we can now reach that 192.168.1.1 because of our e2 route down the bottom there and because of that we've now got a valid next hop and we can now take that route and put it into our routing table so the question is what is the better solution should you use next hop self should you use redistribution it depends on the context next hop self is kind of breaking ibgp rules uh, but in the case of redistribution perhaps this might be a, a not very reliable link maybe it's flapping a lot this can cause some kind of instability in your core interior gateway protocol you don't want to do that so it really does depend on the context what i will say is that if you're going to go the kind of 
redistribution way, make sure you redistribute this and not configure this as OSPF with simply a passive interface. The reason why is if you do it with a passive interface and this link flaps, you're going to get a full SPF recalculation with that being a redistributed route, it will only invoke a partial uh, recalculation. So it's much more stable to do a redistribution than just simply doing a passive interface. So just bear that in mind. Now the next thing and the last thing I want to talk about is just with IBGP and Lookback. So let's talk about that now. Okay, so I was talking to my friend Eva recently and she asked me a really good question about IBGP and loopbacks. So I thought let's just briefly discuss it. What is the deal with IBGP and using loopbacks? Well, the thing is, because this is our own AS and we are running an IGP or OSPF throughout it, we can actually invoke its dynamic routing capabilities to actually have a more stable peering relationship. So what I've done is I've actually had this peering relationship between routers 1 and routers 2 on the loopbacks 1.1.1.1 and 2.2.2.2. But let's just say for a second that I actually had a physical peering over this interface. Now what would happen is, if this interface, Gig00, happened to go down, then my peering is completely lost. But watch what happens when I'm doing over the loopback. So if I do a show IP BGP sum, you can see our neighbours 2.2.2.2, which is our loopback. And if we go in and shut down Gig00 and shut it down, okay, and we do, we've lost our OSPF neighbour, which is fine. But if we do our show IP BGP neighbour 2.2.2, and we include the state. Oh, if I can type BGP right, that would help. We've still got an established state because we can still just find a new route to that loopback via OSPF. So let's just shut down more. Let's shut down um, 0, 3, and 0, 1 as well. So we lose even more links. So we'll shut down them too. So we're losing OSPF neighbours, but again, if we do, we've still got an established state. We're still up because we still have a route via OSPF to that loopback. So as long as the router is still up and we can find a path via OSPF, the BGP peer will remain up. So let's just quickly draw that. So what I've done here is I've basically shut down this link. We've imagined this link is broken. We've imagined this link is broken and imagine this link is broken. So what we can do is we can still route via OSPF through here and get to that loopback. So we'll still get the peering. And even if this link broke, this link broke, uh, this link broke, and even this and this, we could still get to the router via OSPF via this. So if we just peer via the loopbacks, we get much more stability. If we're running our IGP anyway, why not make full use of it effectively? Okie doke. So let's just do a final recap. Okay, so BGP will invoke eBGP rules when you specify a different autonomous system number, but invoke iBGP rules when you invoke the same autonomous system number when you're specifying your neighbour relationship. BGP, or rather eBGP, will prepend the AS path and stamp it with its AS number, and it will also, crucially, modify the next hop. However, iBGP will not prepend the AS path as it passes routes throughout the iBGP domain, and even more crucially, it will not modify that next hop. So make sure to ensure next hop reachability via the next hop self command or via redistribution. And remember, there are other things to focus on, but the most important thing to understand between eBGP and iBGP is the handling of that next hop information and how they prevent loops. Okie doke, so that's the end of the video. Thanks very much, and I'll see you guys soon.